Hello, I'm Brigantia Blackbird of Blackbird's Brew. Happy Saturday. Welcome back to Wicca 101. We are continuing with our altar tools chapter in our classes, and this is also the final chapter. So I did promise you that uh, we weren't going to be going on into affinity with all the various tools we might use in our craft, but we are coming to the end of the ones we use most regularly during uh, most of our more formal rituals. And next week, we're actually going to be talking about how to consecrate our tools. So definitely tune in for that. But for today, we're going to be focusing on offering plates, bowls, and chalices. So let's start with the offering plate. This is the one I use. It's from my everyday dishes. Uh, there's nothing particularly special or interesting about it, but it does serve the purpose. And uh, that's the role that we're really needing from our offering plate, because the offering is exactly what it sounds like. We are putting something onto this plate, and we are offering it to deity. Most often this will come in the form of food. Uh, not always those. So we might be offering them one of our handicrafts or a particular stone, um, maybe some incense or um, or a flower or some kind of plant, uh, but whatever it may be. But this is, it's just nice to have something that is set aside. And this is the plate that I consistently use when I am making uh, my food offerings. Another use for this, and sometimes you will have a separate plate for this and sometimes you won't, is that when you come to the uh, cakes and ale uh, section of the ritual, which is the, the closest equivalent, I would say, is essentially it's pagan communion. Uh, but you might also have it be serving double duty for that. You are offering it to the deity while also eating a bit of it for yourself to commune. Uh, but sometimes um, you will do have separate things for that. It really depends on what you're doing, why you're doing it, and what deity you're working with because different gods and goddesses uh, do have different requirements and uh, they do make that known, especially if you work with them over a longer period of time. So, offering plate. Now, Bowls. Sometimes what we are offering might be more uh, easier to contain in a bowl. Uh, some, I find myself using offering bowls uh, because uh, Loki, for reasons best known to himself, if I am eating oatmeal for breakfast, uh, he wants the last couple of bites in it. And so he gets his own in, in his own bowl. And that's uh, part of the offerings that I'll make to him of a morning. However, most often during formal rituals, if it's not just kind of daily uh, touching in with your deity kind of a ritual, if it's something like a full moon ritual or anything of that sort, uh, you will want to have another bowl. And you won't be offering anything in it, but you will be putting uh, blessed holy water into it, and you'll be using it to sprinkle around the circle as you walk it, usually three times. We'll get more into the procedure when we talk about circle casting in upcoming episodes and classes. Uh, but you you have to have a place to keep it, and it just makes a lot more sense. So anytime you're having to sprinkle something or dip your hand into it, it makes more sense to do it like this than it would be, you know, dipping your hand into a cup or a goblet. And so just for practical reasons, that's how I choose to use it for that. Now, chalices. <laughs> uh, chalices could be very expensive, very, very formal, and very, very detailed in silver, or they could be uh, a wine glass that you specifically set aside to act as the chalice for your altar. Uh, some of them do have pagan symbols on it. Um, this was actually uh, given to me a couple years ago, and it's been on my altar ever since. And what you will do is that you will uh, pour you know, the wine or the mead or uh, the beer, or any liquid that's cool into this. And then when you get to the offering of the cakes and ale, or when you are toasting the gods, you will use that. If you are choosing to use this as an offering, I would recommend having a separate one, just so it's a little bit more known that this is specifically for the deities and you are giving it to them. But again, that is that will vary a little bit from practitioner to practitioner. But... What if you don't have one of these? Well, never fear. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why you wouldn't ha you have a chalice like that. I mean, it's not something that everyone automatically has around the house. And even though they're not expensive to get, you could find one at the dollar store that's clear and that would serve the purpose well enough. It's just, um, especially if you're practicing in the broom closet, it's not always uh, the most user-friendly option. So you could, in a pinch, use a common ordinary juice glasses. Now mine... If you can see, it actually has uh, some palmistry symbols on it. I got it from a local big bookstore a couple years back. Uh, but this I use uh, specifically when I'm making offerings of uh, harder liquors. Um, Loki likes his whiskey. 
go figure. Uh, so I usually bring it to them in this. But what if, however, you are making a liquid offering of something that's a hot liquid? Because obviously, this would not be ideal for hot liquids. You could burn yourself, you might damage the glass, and uh, you know, you just, you don't want that, and you don't want to give yourself a headache. So when I'm making offerings of such as tea, what I will do is I will get one of my mugs. Now, this is the mug I use for Loki. It has that uh, quote from uh, Sherlock. It says, I'm not a psychopath. I'm a high-functioning sociopath. Do your research. Uh, he gets a kick out of that. So whenever he's wanting a cup of tea from me, I will uh, make the tea in this particular cup. And then I have a specific spot on my altar where I put it in order to give it to him. Uh, but if you want something a little plainer, you can. It, um, it also depends on the working relationship you have with your deity, if you if they're wanting uh, offerings of tea or other warm liquids from, from you. Um, obviously, don't pick anything that's cutesy or has any sayings on it if that deity doesn't like it. Um, if I hadn't gotten the feeling that Loki liked that particular one, I wouldn't use it, but it makes him laugh, and so I do. Uh, for other deities, you know, something that's plainer or something that just has a simple floral or a geometric design, that would be perfectly fine. It's just about uh, getting a feel for what's acceptable, and you just have to rely on your intuition. And if all else fails, uh, just uh, in, in your prayers or in your meditations, just say, So, uh, I'm human, and I'm a little slow. I need a sign from you in bright, flashy lights. <laughs> what you would like me to do in this particular uh, field. And then hopefully over time, uh, you'll get an answer that you'll be able to discern and then you'll be able to go from there. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot of guidance about where you can find these uh, different tools because you can find them anywhere you could get your home dishes for the most part. And if you're looking for something more specific, I would recommend going on Etsy. But you're probably going to pay, pay a pretty penny because if someone is uh, making uh, chalices and offering plates and bowls and so on, uh, specifically for use in ritual, well, they've probably put a lot of artistic time and effort into it. And, well, I mean, they're going to want to be compensated, and rightfully so. So uh, you just, just take your own home budget into consideration and act sensibly. So homework for this week from January 22nd through the 28th, first... Do a little window shopping online and try to find an example of different plates or bowls or chalices or mugs that you think that you would like to use in ritual, something that you think uh, would be suitable. Uh, then the second, I want you to spend a little bit of time thinking about what kind of things do you think would make suitable offerings. Even though we're going to be get delving into that topic a little bit later on down the road, I want you to start thinking about it because a lot of our classes are going to start uh, focusing a little bit more on practicalities. For instance, next week we'll be doing uh, the consecration of ritual tools. Then we're going to be going through uh, the structure of rituals themselves. Then we're going to take a break. Well, sort of. <laughs> then we'll have an introduction to astrology or the chakras or something of that kind. Uh, but we are going to be getting a little bit more uh, from basic theory and into some basic practices. So start thinking about what kinds of things you think might make suitable offerings, what would show the gods your esteem and respect. Because if this does end up being the, uh, the path for you, well, you know, this is a path of doing, not so much believing or sitting like a bump on a log and waiting for someone else to do things for you. It is an active participatory kind of religion. And that brings me actually to your third assignment. Uh, where are you? As far as all, all that goes, do you find yourself thinking, oh, maybe Wicca is for me? Oh, maybe Wicca isn't for me? Uh, or do you get any more of a sense of, do you want to have a religion in which you are taking a very active role? Or are you looking for something that's a little bit more passive? Now, this is important for you to be honest with yourself about, because if you find, if you try to force yourself down a religious path, that really isn't for you. You're going to make yourself miserable. And as I said at the very beginning of these classes, this isn't about making converts. This isn't about trying to force anyone into a mold, but it is asking people to take a, a good, honest look on the insides and ask themselves some fundamental questions about what do they want spiritually? What are they trying to get out of it? What do they need? And what's going to be ultimately to their benefit? So for your third assignment this week, do a little bit of soul searching and journaling about that because it's important to think about that as we go through this process. So uh, that is it for this week. Um, I will see you 
in our next class next week. It'll be the consecration of our ritual tools. I'll have lots of good ideas for you there. Uh, so I hope you'll be back for that. Uh, in the meantime, uh, please come join me on uh, Discord. There's a link to join in the uh, description box below. I am having a weekly chats on Sunday afternoons at 3 p.m. Central Time. So if that's something you'd be interested in, because uh, we can talk about this class, we can talk about other uh, magical or spiritual topics. It's a little bit more of a free-for-all. It's a very unstructured, uh, informal discussion. But you can learn a great deal in these conversations that can really help you kind of uh, solidify in your own mind about what you're wanting to get out of this huge journey, because it is about your relationship with the, your gods, uh, you know, not impressing any other pagans. So uh, do that. And of course, subscribe to this channel, like the video, leave a comment. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.